Put them on the outside. That's how big and how holy that name is. We can say that name today. That name is the name Yahweh or Jehovah. That's the big name of God. That's who our shepherd is, Jehovah. But what, what does that name really imply? Well, when you start speaking of Yahweh, Jehovah, you're talking about the creator God. The self-existing God. The God who was not created. He, he existed. The God who stepped, as one person said, from nowhere, put his foot on nothing and then just declared, let there be. Now it's interesting, and please, brothers and sisters, don't, don't think that you understand that as I'm not going to stand before you and pretend that I know, because how do you find nothing? How can you give meaning a substance to nothing when nothing has nothing? But he unlocked the secrets of nothingness, stepped out of nothing, put his foot on nothing, and just simply spoke a word. Let that be. That's power. That's, that's Yahweh. That's, that's who he is. But quickly, and we can spend much time there, but... Um, we had to get the name broken down uh, a bit so that we could really carry it with us because by itself the, the name is just too heavy. And in places in the scripture, one particular place when Abraham was on the mountain with, with Isaac at the sacrifice, uh, the name had to be broken down that we learned the word of the name Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. In other places you'll find them, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee, Jehovah Mehodishim, the Lord who sanctifies, Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord our righteousness, and that big name, Jehovah Ra, the Lord our shepherd. That's, that's, that's his name, that's his name. Matter of fact, an interesting piece I think that you might, uh, might want to pack with you. Every time you recite the 23rd Psalms, you are calling His name. Every time you recite the 23rd Psalms, you are calling His name. May I share for a moment? The Lord my shepherd, Jehovah, Roha. I shall not want. He leads me. He makes me lie down in green pastures. That's provision. Jehovah Jireh. He leads me behind, beside still waters. That's Jehovah Shalom. He restores my soul. That's Jehovah Rapha. He leads me in paths of righteousness. Jehovah Tishkenu. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the ship of shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. Every time you really delve into the 23rd Psalms, you are calling his name. He anoints my head with oil. Jehovah Melodishim. Sanctify, the sanctify. That's who he is. Now let me say to you, I know that just a few years ago we started singing songs that engulfed many of the names of God, and we as a people became so impressed and enthused with our new understanding of these great names and theological terms. And sometimes we want to impress people. With what we know, you know how we would do that. Uh, we would want to share with them our prayers and we would want to address the prayer by saying, Oh, today I called upon Jehovah Rapha because I needed, uh, I needed food in my house. Well, really, truly, you call Rapha, but Rapha is the healer and Jara is the food provider. And we can become all twisted with his names and trying to be impressive with his names. But let me share with you, 
there is good news. God knew that these things would be. And so what he did, he gave us another name. And that is he gave the name of Jesus. A name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now you may want to wonder about the credentials of Jesus. Is he a healer? Somebody out there will tell you, yes, he is a healer. Is he a provider? Oh, yes, he is a provider. Is he our banner? Yes, he is our banner. We once sang the song, Onward Christian Soldiers, because he is our banner. Jesus is our everything, and he is, amen, he is our, our shepherd. Reading through that psalm, you will look and see it's the Lord, not a Lord, but the Lord. This, this particular God, this, this Jehovah God, is our shepherd. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, because he is our shepherd with creation and creative power. Whatever it is that you need that does not exist, it's in the power of God to produce it because he can create. And I don't think it gets better than that. I hear some of the old saints testify about needing some medicine that didn't exist. But somewhere in the nighttime, they called upon Jehovah and God answered the prayer. He didn't necessarily bring a pill. Matter of fact, the pill may have been a word spoken. And whatever God said, it's already settled. Amen. The next little word in that one line, the Lord, you find in, in italics the word is. Italics simply means that it was inserted in the line. It was not in the original text. As a matter of fact, the original text would read something like Yahweh, my shepherd. Uh, but for the English understanding, we needed a verb, and so they wanted to insert a verb, and really and truly, what verb could they insert that would apply to God? You couldn't, they could not say, uh, the Lord was, because that's past tense. And God has never been a past tense God. You, you, you couldn't quite say will be, because he's always been. So will be goes with that. The only word that you could really ascribe to God in terms of his being is is. He is. Present tense. Verb form to be is. Matter of fact, it's synonymous with the word am. You remember when Moses was on the mountain and Moses was given the assignment to go tell Pharaoh to let God's people go and Moses asked God, God, what's your name? It says, uh, all of the gods down in Egypt got a name. What's your name? And God says, my name is I am. I know you know the statement goes, I am that I am. But I think between I am and the word that, there are some other kinds of gestures and discussion. Moses says, Lord, you, you are, but... Uh, what are you? Or who, who are you? Are you? Are you the mountain that we're standing on? But all of a sudden the mountain was quaking and it meant to Moses, God has to be greater than the mountain. Are you the bush that's burning but not being consumed? Moses had to conclude, wait a minute, there's a mystery in the bush that's greater than the bush. You've got to be greater than that. And I think Moses went through a whole litany of things trying to say who or what God is. And when he finished without coming up with an answer, God says, I am that I am. Listen, brothers and sisters, in this day of coronavirus, God says, I am that I am. There is no one equal to me, but me. I am the only one who is equal to me. 
The devil, even in his opposite, is not equal to me. For he's a creature and I am the creator. Hallelujah. There is no one in the category of our God. He stands alone. He stands with power. He stands with might. We're not worried about a virus. We're not worried about those things because our God is greater. And you need to know that He is. He is right now. You don't have to wait for God to become. He's right now. He understands what's happening right now. He's, he's with us right now. Whatever His will is, God is with us right now. That's, that's who He is. Thirdly, the third question is what He is. Psalms 23 in that first line says He's a shepherd. Now that ought to warm your heart because again, uh, when you think of a shepherd and his job, the shepherd's job is to lead, to guide, to protect, to provide, to keep sheep together, to defend. What a job, what a job the shepherd has toward the sheep. He leads them, he guides them, he protects them, he provides for them. And let me tell you something, he knows them. They know his voice. He knows every sheep by their name. As a matter of fact, this shepherd has a real, uh, what I call a sheep complex. Why do you call it a sheep complex, brother preacher? Well, in our human roles as pastors, truth be told, uh, shamefully admitted at times, we've got a flock complex. As long as we've got a flock, we're all right. What are the names in the flock? Sometimes we know. Sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we have sheep that is not so orderly. Sometimes we have sheep that we would hope was a part of someone else's role. But that's not the case without Jesus. He knows every sheep. Matter of fact, he himself was talking, telling us as though every evening when he brings the sheep in, if he has a hundred sheep, every sheep is counted. And even if one is missing, he locks the 99 up to go look for that lost one. And he rescues him, he finds him, he brings him back. In my own imagination, brothers and sisters, I, I've wondered sometimes where did he find the sheep? And what did he have to do to the sheep? When I was growing up as a little boy, we would see the pictures of uh, the shepherd. Some of you may remember the Watkins man who would come around and sell these products. And, and we would hang them on the wall in our houses of this beautiful Jesus with the long hair and the wonderful colored eyes and so forth, packing little sheep and you would be saying, oh, that's so sweet and wonderful and how meek the sheep. But in truth, you don't know where he found that little sheep that had wandered away because sheep are prone to wonder. Give them green grass and they will nibble themselves away sometimes places he finds us and I'm sure I'm speaking to someone this morning who can testify with me that he finds us sometimes in some strange places and sometimes he has to discipline us that again we might stay with the fold that we will really know how much he loves us and how much he cares. As a matter of fact, the scripture will tell us that for those he loves, he will chastise. He's our, he's our shepherd. It is his job.
to get us from 22 to 24. I better say that again. It's the shepherd's job to get us from Psalms 22 to Psalms 24. It's not the sheep's job. It's the shepherd's job. When he gets home, he has to give a report to his father about every sheep. That's why in John chapter 6, he says, All that the father sends to me, I will in no wise cast out, and I will raise them up even at the last day. So even if the sheep lay down and gives its life, the shepherd still has a responsibility to present it when he gets before the father. My brothers and sisters, how deep that is, but he will not lose that one sheep because he's the shepherd. That's why he's good. That's why he's great. That's why he's chief. He's the shepherd. Well, if he's the shepherd, that question comes, then who are we? Well, obviously you would answer, yeah, we are. We are the sheep. And because we're the sheep, oh, how wonderful, how, how great. But have you ever considered the characteristics of, of sheep? I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, when I read through some of the characteristics of sheep, though I'm excited to be one, I'm a little hesitant to want to claim but whether I want to claim it or not, it's still true. When I understand that sheep have no sense of direction. Sheep will go, matter of fact, they will follow anybody. Especially if the one they follow has given them something to eat. And there are many feeders out there that's not feeding the stuff that sheep really need. But they they are, they are senseless when it comes to direction. How many days do we sit in our church houses with steeples and beautiful sanctuaries and uh, directionless sheep can walk past the church, seeing the steeple, knowing where they need to be, but can't figure out how to get in on the inside. Don't know how to walk up and come in. They're senseless of direction. But not only that, sheep are defenseless. Sheep can't fight. When Satan comes to us to attack us, and we don't have one who can defend us, we don't have the power to fight back. That's why many lives today who's listening to me are defeated because you don't have a, a shepherd and you can't fight. I'd say, I've said sheep are dumb, sheep are dirty, sheep are stupid, sheep are senseless. Brothers and sisters, I think that all of us, maybe in the closets of our own memories, may remember times of stupidity. I say often in the Mount Sinai Church that all of us are enrolled in stupid university. Oh, I know, it may be that it's been a while since you've taken some courses and classes that you're not proud of. And even though you've arrived at a now a senior year, the truth still be told every now and then. If you don't enroll in a class, you're in the order of the class. Because stupid school has no graduates. And how many times have we been? How many times have we been there? Oh brothers and sisters, just a shepherd, but we need a good shepherd. We need a great shepherd. We need 
the chief shepherd. Sheep don't bear burdens. They can't bear burdens. And we need a shepherd who can help us with the burdens that we have to bear. Well, that's where it is. That's who he is. That's what he is. That's the line. The Lord is. I heard that. You said you didn't use the word. You didn't cover the word mind. Brothers and sisters of that line, to me, mind is the most important word in that opening statement. Mind means I have claimed him. I have owned him. I have accepted what he has said about me. I've read through the book of Romans and I've read where it says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I've read where it says there is none righteous, no, not one. I've read where it says for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I've read where it says, but God demonstrated his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Then I read where it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Oh, my soul got excited because I discovered that if I call upon the name of Jesus and confess my sins and believe that Jesus died for my sins, that salvation would be mine. And I want you to know I did that. And now, lo, all of these years, Saved, saved, sanctified, saved. I belong to him. And the question is, do you belong to him? Now many of us know the song, but the question is, how many of us know the shepherd? How would you travel along with us on this road, just examining this old song? over these next few weeks. But if you've not met Jesus, I want you to know that you can know him today. You can give your life to Jesus right now. Matter of fact, you may have given your life to Jesus, but as well, given those worries, given those concerns, you don't have to be so concerned of what coronavirus would do. Give it to Jesus. And even if coronavirus has to come our way, we have a shepherd who has everything we need. We'll talk more about that. But give your life to Jesus today. Simply pray a prayer of this order. Lord, here I am. Have mercy upon me. I'm a sinner. Lord, I pray that you forgive me of my sins. I believe you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead and that you are alive right now making an intercession for me to the Father. Now give me salvation. Lord, include me in your flock and lead me to your brighter glory. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for salvation. Come live in our hearts, O oh God, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with us today. Again, look forward to the lessons that are yet coming. Please write us. Please let us know your appreciation of this opportunity to share with you. Again, if you want to do, participate in online giving, just follow the prompts that are given on the website. As well as to Mount Sinai, you can drop by at any time and, and drop your gifts or your gifts are needed and necessary for the ongoing of ministry. God bless you. God keep you. We we'll look forward uh, to next week with you. Amen. This has been a presentation by the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church Online Ministry. We are located at 501 West Thomas Boulevard in Port Arthur, Texas. If you are in need of prayer, please call 409 Nine eight two six four six four. 
extension 102. If you are searching to know more about Christ, please contact us via our website and one of our ministers will be in contact with you. If you are without a church home, we invite you to join us. Please join this ministry by going to our website at www.mountsinimbc.com. That's www.mountsinimbc.com. Also, if you would like to donate to this ministry, we invite you to do so. Donations are accepted online, by mail, and in person. Please review options on giving on our website. Thank you for joining us. Please come again. May the grace of our Lord and Savior be with you always.